Hey there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I've got a project that I can't wait to share with you because I can't stop looking at these cute little ornaments without smiling. I'm calling them mini masterpieces because they're little tiny paintings that are done after great artists' masterpieces. And I think this would be such a fun project to just set the supplies out um, on the table and let, you know, guests at a party just make their own mini masterpiece. It is just so much fun. I'm using these mini canvases with easels from Arteza and also some oil-based markers and these are from Pintar. Uh, you can use whatever you have. In fact, you could use acrylic paint and small brushes if you want, but I think markers really um, make it easy. So I started off by sketching the Mona Lisa <laughs> by Da Vinci, of course, and uh, I just wanted to get like the basic um, gesture of everything. I knew I wasn't going to be able to recreate the art perfectly on such a small space and with my skill. <laughs> so I just decided to just kind of sketch it in, um, trying to keep it as kind of iconic looking so that if you just took a glance, you'd be like, oh, that's Mona Lisa, you know? And uh, also these are square canvases. So the, you know, you wouldn't be able to fit the entire, um, you know, proportions of all of the, you know, of all the paintings and stuff, but you can really still get a good idea. Now, if you want to do this on a budget, you didn't have the stretch canvases, you could go to your recycling bin and cut out little rectangles of cardboard. You could cover it with some watercolor paper or canvas, just glue it down, prime it, and you can do the same thing. So you don't need to go and buy anything special. You can make a little pretend, you can make a little mini easel by using popsicle sticks and hot glue, gluing them together, and um, that would be just as cute. So don't feel like you have to run out and buy something if you don't want to. Now, some Thing you can do with these oil-based markers because they will stay wet for a couple minutes is that you can put the colors and then you can blend them with a brush. I didn't have a flesh tone so I just used kind of a mixture of white, brown, orange, a little bit of pink to mix up my own color. There you can see me attempting to mix it on a plate but I got to tell you you're better off just um, coloring it on the surface and then just kind of smudging it together with a brush. That's what I found to be the most useful because it will dry in the ceramic and be tough as nails. Uh, I Still haven't gotten it all clean off my palette yet. <laughs> so it's probably a super durable paint if you were doing some home decor stuff. Um, so I definitely will want to try that with these markers. But there I mixed up a little bit of color that gave me a little bit more of a natural tone to Mona Lisa's face. I recommend that you don't fuss with this too much. Um, I'll probably just eventually go out and try to find a beige oil-based marker so I can get some more of those neutral tones. I fussed with this a lot and um, I found that I really didn't like the results any better. And when it was all done, you really couldn't you really didn't notice that the colors were not absolutely perfect. So give yourself um, a little slack, cut yourself some slack and just have fun with this project. Honestly, mixing that face to color was like the most time consuming part of this whole project. Also, don't get fussy with details. Just get a little mark in there and call it a day. I fussed with the features a little bit thinking though, because there are some fine tip markers that I had in this kit that I used. Um, I thought, well, I can go in there and give these little details, but I ended up just kind of just over fussing it and making the Mona Lisa look like Morticia Adams at one point. Um, but so I just let that be and I decided to work on the background and here's where the, I was blending the colors. Looking at the um, picture of Mona Lisa, I could see that the colors were actually very muted and that's probably due to the age of the painting, but I wanted to replicate that. So I used kind of like some teal, some gold and some blue because I didn't have a beige and then I gently brush blended it so that I got that kind of muted um, sky color. And then I used some of those colors in the kind of water that's underneath there and just tried to stay as accurate as I could to the colors in the, uh, the photograph I was looking at. And of course you can find photos of the Mona Lisa or any other famous masterpiece online. Wikipedia has nice um, large versions of pretty much any famous um, masterpiece out there that you want to check out. Just uh, just have fun with it and do your best. I used a variety of colors in the foreground. I was surprised at how much orange was in this painting. I never would have guessed it if I hadn't been looking directly at the painting and uh, I really thought that looked really nice, especially making the blues in the background pop and uh, putting little reflections in the water and just kind of fussing around with a, a little bit. Something I found really interesting uh, as these ornaments dried and they're hanging on my Christmas tree, they I noticed the markers kind of dried to a beautiful uniform sheen, kind of like, um, uh, I would say a, like a satin finish. So that's kind of nice. Once everything dries, you do get a beautiful finish on there. 
So for the next mini masterpiece, I decided I would take on Van Gogh's Starry Night. I realized after trying to blend on the Mona Lisa project that these markers would be much better for a painterly approach where you can see the brush strokes. So going with a impressionist, post-impressionist, or expressionist masterpiece would be a lot more um, conducive to using a medium like markers. And I really love that this project uses markers because it is um, it, it is just such a, I, th I feel like it's a project anybody can do, even if you want to keep it even simpler um, and do a very, a very simple scene. I still think that anybody could pick up a marker, uncap it, and start playing and start coloring and start painting and drawing, regardless of your skill level. And that's why I want to keep it very approachable because I think a lot of times when you're doing projects like ornaments and you're doing projects for the holidays, everybody wants to do holiday crafts. Even if you don't craft the rest of the year, you want to do holiday crafts. You're, you want to do them with your kids. You want to um, have that, that creative time, especially when you're stressed out for the holidays. And these are just so perfect for that. Here you can see just those little marks made with the markers give you that um, brush stroke effect that Van Gogh had in his Starry Night painting or in even all of his other works. They had that very distinct brush stroke look and you can keep those defined strokes by using the markers. Now, if you are going in with black to darken a color, what you want to do is just put in a few little marks and then immediately go over it with your darker blue and spread it out if you don't want those uh, those marks to be really dark. And I would just keep dabbing a color and layering them until you get the effect you want. And uh, the last thing you want to do would be putting th those um, distinct cypress trees in the front, which is really going to make it look like Starry Night. I just really like how this turned out and I thought it was the best technique to approach with these markers. So uh, you don't have to have oil based markers. They do have a little bit of an odor to them. So if you prefer an acrylic based marker or a tempera marker, that would work just fine. In fact, I think any like even a Sharpie would work in this. Just keep in mind if you're using a Sharpie that um, the colors are transparent so you wouldn't be able to layer up as much as you can here. So it's just something to kind of keep in mind. If you're using a Sharpie, you might actually have to have like a Q-tip with some rubbing alcohol on it to lift back to white if you need to. So for this last one, I decided to use the Scream as my uh, inspiration. And it was so funny because uh, after I painted these, my son came home from school and he's in, um, He's a sophomore in high school, and I and I asked if he could if he could tell what these three paintings were, and he knew every one, and I was so excited that they were recognizable. Um, so I did a lot of mixing here. This is um, an abstract expressionist work uh, by the artist Edvard M Munch, I believe is how you pronounce his last name. I apologize if I got that wrong, uh, but it is a very iconic painting and I just love the complementary color scheme of having the oranges in the sky and the blues in the water and I just think it's it's just so powerful and such a um, such a really interesting piece. Now I wanted to, I had some trouble getting a straight line kind of on the rails and I just assume this guy is either on a bridge or on a pier. Um, so I wanted to get those lines straight. We're not putting a lot of detail in but what we do put in we want to be as accurate as we can and I wanted to get those kind of reflections, the yellowy orange reflections on the uh, the railing. So I just went in, used my paintbrush as a straight edge and drew those lines. So use what you got. Look around. If you don't have a ruler, use a paintbrush, you know, make it, make it work, people, make it work. And uh, I decided to go in with black on the rest of the railing and kind of like the shadows to make it stand out. And I'm also going in black and sketching on the character there, um, the, uh, the man in the robe. And uh, I just thought the black, black would really cut. I'd be able to see it really well against the crazy colors that I have going on. And I just basically kind of dabbed in the facial features, knowing that I was going to have to blend in some white to kind of lighten everything up. And I think I actually might have put a little smidgen of, um, of silver in there because I didn't have just the right color gray that I wanted. But you can really mix. You have those, those few seconds of wet time with the markers that you can mix a little bit. And you would have that with an, with an acrylic marker too. The thing I want to uh, just make note of, because I used that white as a blending color, um, you want to scribble that off onto to a um, like a scrap of paper or wipe it off on a paper napkin um, every once in a while it's definitely before you put it away to store it because that way you don't uh, ruin the tips or contaminate the tips I should say uh, but as long as you kind of scribble off the 
um, the other colors from your markers if you're using them to blend you should be fine and you may need to let the paint sit up just a little bit if you need to go in and lighten something uh, so it doesn't over mix like the the face is kind of gray right there but I knew I needed to let it sit a little bit more before I put in some other colors and highlights um, and again less is more with these you're not going to get the level of detail um, for a couple reasons for one you've got this small canvas and the bullet tip markers are not super fine so you just want to put the the most vague details i guess what i want to say is you want it to be um accurate but you don't want it to be detailed so something i like to say is pretend that you have to pay ten dollars for every brush stroke you know or every every mark you make and that will maybe help you use an economy of brush strokes but i thought that came out so cute and um and it was just, you know, it was just so much fun to do. And like, if you do need to go in and add extra highlights, just let the let the paint sit up a little bit and then dab them on um, when you're like after it's kind of set up a little bit. But uh, these were also fun, and I really just enjoyed making them. So you can use the leave the edges of the canvas white. You could write um, like a note. To someone on there if you're giving that as a gift um, you know or you could paint them all black but I thought it was really nice to use a color from the um, uh, from the artwork or even a couple blend them together however you want to do it I thought that it was really nice to give it that kind of frame and made it look really finished so now what I'm doing is just I just decided to choose some organza thread I didn't want it to be too like holiday themed or Christmassy themed because I didn't know I thought maybe these would be fun to have out year-round so I decided I would just go with some uh, kind of sheer cream organza ribbon and what I'm going to do is um, attach ribbon to the canvases and then the canvases to these little easels now the easels will stand up so um, to make sure that they will continue to stand up after you're done you're going to want to make sure that you don't glue the easels shut so I'll show you what to do there in a second and also offer <laughs> another idea for making them a little bit better uh, so for the organza what you want to do is put a dab of hot glue and then hold the ribbon by the ends and don't press your finger into the glue so you don't end up you know hurting yourself so do that to each of the canvases and then uh, when you go to glue them to the easels, you're going to want to make sure that you only put glue on the two side pieces of the easel or the front piece of the easel. Now, when I did it, I just put glue on, uh, put a little bit of glue at the bottoms of each of the legs of the easel. Um, but, you know, the only place it's really going to contact is the bottom. What I should have done was those two edges and then on the surface of the front where it kind of rests just to give it a little bit more stability. I mean, this held fine, but just, you know, I would feel a little bit better if I had a little bit more glue on there uh, but there you go it's a uh, it's a pretty easy fix and I think these were just so fun to make and they're hanging on my Christmas tree now and anytime I look at them I just smile and I just think they are so fun and if I taught high school art class this would be a project I would do with my students in a heartbeat and in fact I think this would be really fun just to lay out the supplies on the table uh, gather your friends and family around and have a little maybe a sip and paint or a paint night where you do these little mini masterpieces and uh, if you do tag me on Instagram because I would love to see it so there's a final thing that I wanted to do for this and of course you could write something different on here if you want but I just wanted to put the year so um, when you look back in years uh, in the future you can know that you made these in 2018 or whenever you happen to be watching this video you could also put somebody's name on there um, you could write the artwork that it was designed after uh, the choice is yours and I don't think there's a bad choice and I also wanted to mention that I used a fine tip acrylic paint pen for that and not the um, and not the oil-based marker because that was a little bit thicker. But anyway, we are done. Thanks so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this project. Until next time, happy crafting.